If you are a pop culture prepper like I am, a person of refined taste who is always that person that has read the book at parties, you may be getting the sense that it's time to start bunkering down with a little series from the 90s called Animorphs. A movie was recently announced, a graphic novel is coming later on this year, and with J.K. Rowling proving to be more unbearable by the day, there has been renewed appreciation for the YA phenomenon that preceded it and the unproblematic authors that penned it. As an old fan that always kind of resented Harry Potter for casting a shadow over Animorphs' success, I am feeling suitably smug right now, I must say. Okay, okay, I'm just being petty after years of resentment for real though i'm very sorry for harry potter fans who are shattered right now that really sucks do not underestimate me when i say that animorphs are my jam like my peanut butter jelly jam and that is to say there's something that i used to consume on the daily and then i grew up and kind of forgot about them Animorphs Crash Course. If you're a millennial, you'll probably recognize Animorphs as those books with the weird covers that you either read and loved, or you turned your nose up at and picked up goosebumps instead. What people often don't know about Animorphs, because most people just picked them up, admired the cover, and flipped through the little flip book on the pages, and never actually read them, is that these little books pack a story, and a really, really dark one at that. Animorphs is about a covert alien invasion by a bunch of parasites called yurks who crawl into your ear, wrap around your brain, and take over your body. Five teenagers are given the ability to morph so that humans have a fighting chance against total enslavement. It was written by duo K.A. Applegate and her husband Michael Grant, with a good chunk of the middle books written by ghostwriters. Despite their age group, Animorphs is dark, bloody, and does not shy away from the nitty-gritty reality of what real world is like. What you probably thought was a fun, campy romp with kids playing around as animals is really the psychological spiral of a bunch of kids being traumatized by being the only five humans on Earth fighting a gruesome war. Also, there was a really awful Nickelodeon show that we just, we don't talk about that. I have been holding on to these books for years as the last standing cornerstone of my childhood, and I've been meaning to reread them, but the problem with Animorphs is, well, they're kind of hard to read. The writing is simple. It was intended for middle grade readers in the 90s, and we just... Apparently we weren't as smart back then as middle grade readers are now. I don't know. It's filled with cheesy sound effects, things like pew pew, zap zap, seer, you know, how, however you pronounce seer. On the one hand, the sparse prose worked in their favor with less time spent describing the sound of an explosion and just saying boom instead. They were able to pack a lot into these teeny tiny 130 page novels here. On the other hand, well, it can be kind of cringe. So despite really wanting to revisit them, I never made it past rereading maybe the first book, and I decided maybe it was just better to leave Animorphs in the past, enjoy my rosy remembrances of them, enjoy my collection on the shelf, but let's not ruin a good thing, right? Animorphs ended in May 2001 with a final book, number 54, The Beginning, bringing a conclusion to the war and seeing the Animorphs left as broken husks of their former selves. The ending met with some controversy because it wasn't really that happy victory that fans wanted, to which Catherine Applegate famously responded, Good. War sucks, and if you don't like it, you need to vote. Ten years later, Animorphs were briefly revived for a re-release with lenticular covers that did not scratch my nostalgic itch, but that's okay, they're not for me. The text was updated to be a little more politically correct for a new generation, as well as updating pop culture references. Sadly, sales just weren't great, and they ended the book series with number seven as the last physical book, and number eight being the final release in ebook only. The world moved on, and it seemed that we'd all forgotten about Animorphs. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. It is now 2020. It has been 20 years since the series ended. Nearly 20 years since the series ended. And I think it's finally time. It is time to revisit my old friends Cassie, Marco, Jake, Rachel, and Tobias Axe. I'm coming home. 
Prepare the Barn. In January of this, our year of horror, 2020, Scholastic has at last released audiobooks for the series, official audiobooks, and I can definitively tell you... This is the best way to revisit the series in 2020. The series is narrated by heavy hitters in the YA audiobook scene with a different narrator for each character's books. While it's not really an audio drama in which different actors would play their roles in each book, having six talented narrators rotating the series is a pleasant surprise given the relative obscurity of the series these days. Listening to these feels like a totally fresh and new experience. The books are written in first person, which I think lends well to the audio format because it feels very intimate. It feels like someone is telling you a story, which is exactly how the books were written. My name is Jake, and here's what's going on. All of the writing quirks that were difficult to go back to as an adult, like the sound effects in particular, work to actually enhance the listening experience rather than detract from a reading experience. They don't have actual sound Sound effects, but the narrators do a really good job of pulling off weird noises like the hawks to sear, and sometimes they even straight up bark. I barked for no reason. Chapter 1 My name is Jake. McLeod Andrews, providing the voice for Jake's books, has worked on books like Brandon Sanderson's Reckoner series and Aaron Hunter's Warriors. It's a good thing he'll never watch this video because I mispronounce his name the entire time. It is McLeod. He shows incredible range with distinct voices for every character during his readings, particularly in number six, The Capture. He gave me literal chills as the Yurik that takes over Jake's body, though I will say that his voice for Tobias uh, took some getting used to. I did it, Tobias said. I tried to get my hair to go in one direction by raking my fingers through it. What are you talking about? I was yawning when he answered, I became dude. I stopped yawning. My mouth actually snapped shut. Dude is Tobias's cat. My name is Rachel. I won't tell you my last name. None of us will ever tell you our last names. Emily Ellett narrates Rachel's books. In addition to working as a singer and live performer, she's narrated Margaret Rogerson's Sorcery of Thorns, Tracy West's Dragon Master series, as well as the upcoming audiobook version of Shunned, how I Lost My Religion and Found Myself, which you'll know is of particular interest to me if you follow my other channel. But if you don't, just forget I said that. She was a fan of Animorphs growing up, and I think her voice really suits Rachel perfectly. She had me in tears on the second book, The Visitor, narrating Chapman fighting the yurk in his head to save his daughter. Excellent performance. The real human Chapman had been out of control of his own body for so long, he no longer remembered how to move or speak. Visitor three, he said again. His voice was slurry and strange. Speak, you fool, Visitor three snapped. Do you think I can stay here forever? Visitor three, you, we had a deal. My name is Tobias, a freak of nature, one of a kind. Michael Crouch narrates Tobias in... Oh man, no offense to the other narrators, but Crouch is, hands down, my favorite reader of the bunch. He's a YA powerhouse. In the past, he's worked on books by Rick Riordan, Jean Craighead George, Becky Albertalli, Adam Silvera, on and on and on and on and on. In contrast to MacLeod, McLeod, Andrew's voice for Tobias, Michael Crouch perfectly captures that quiet, shy melancholy of Tobias's character. I really hope they continue producing these audiobooks because Tobias and Axe, they alternate narration every third book in the cycle. So we only have one book with Michael Crouch so far, and I'd really love to hear more. I flew. I flew as fast and as hard as I could. I wanted to go so fast that the memory of killing and eating the rat would be left way behind me. But not even I can fly that fast. Human. I am human. I am Tobias. I don't know why it was Rachel I wanted to see right at that moment. Maybe she was just the closest thing I had to a real friend. Maybe it was the way she had seemed so sure of who and what I was. 
I needed someone to be sure. My name is Cassie. I can't tell you my last name. I wish I could. But I can't even tell you what town I live in or what state. C.C. Aisha Johnson narrates Cassie's books. She's worked in theater, as well as audiobooks for Octavia Butler, Sarah Jakes Roberts, Brittany Morris. And unfortunately, these books were the first ones I didn't really care for. Uh, while the previous three read like your typical YA narrator's word would, I feel like... Johnson plays into it a bit too young. Cassie's books feel kind of like story time. I don't think that she really understands the tone of the story. Sometimes it worked well, especially in the more comedic scenes, like when she first morphs into a squirrel and is really hyperactive. That was great. It was hilarious. But in the more serious scenes, I found it a little annoying. And her voice for Axe, uh, not really a fan. Axe, I said to him. He did not answer. Axe, we have heard his voice before. We've heard his threats. And we are still alive. He will kill us, Axe said. He will kill us. He killed Elfengore. Axe, hang in there. Don't answer him. Don't think about him. Just swim. But Axe's fear was catching. My name is Marco. I can't tell you my last name or where I live. Believe me, I wish I could. Ramon de Acampo performs Marco's books. He's an actor who's performed on things like The West Wing, Sons of Anarchy, and he's also another heavy hitter in the YA genre. He's behind the Diary of the Wimpy Kid audiobooks. Talented as he may be, he's the second narrator I feel a little bit cold about, but for directly opposite reasons as C.C. Aisha Johnson. Well, Johnson plays Cassie a bit too young. I feel that Diacampo plays Marco way too old. The breathy grittiness of his voice just doesn't match the Marco I've always imagined. And it seems, I don't know, it seems kind of contrast after all of the other audiobook narrators. Yeah, you're right, I said. We can't travel faster than light, but we can make a sticky bun that smells pretty good. Sticky, Axe said. Must I carry this? He asked, indicating his empty coffee cup. No, you can just throw it away. Bad choice of words. Axe threw the coffee cup. He threw it hard. It hit one of the cashiers in the head. Hey! My full name is Aximilias Garuthistel. My human friends call me Axe. And finally, Adam Werner rounds out the cast as Axe. Werner has done a number of audiobooks as well, but less on the YA spectrum. He's done things more like Lovecraft. He's done Lovecraft's Necronomicon, books by Robin Sharma, Clive Barker, Stephen Lawhead. Like Tobias, he only has one book here. I think his voice for Axe is perfect. It's a little bit stilted, very analytic, but not outright dopey alien guy like some of the narrators kind of portray Axe. I think he really gets the character. I was powerless, terrified, alone. After an eternity, the dome crunched heavily onto the ocean floor. Looking up, I could barely see the surface of the water a hundred feet or more over the top of the dome. I climbed shakily to my four hooves. I was standing on a vast, open plain that was a piece of my own planet. A blue-green park, hidden deep beneath an alien sea. And there I waited for weeks. Currently, the audiobook series is capped out at number 10. They skipped Megamorphs, which is set between number 7 and 8, uh, which would have been interesting to see how they deal with with the alternating narrators for those chapters, but it's not really a huge deal. I don't remember anything major happening in that book that makes it a must-read, so... Yeah, maybe later they can get to it. Otherwise, I think this is a solid start and a great way to revisit the series and or even check it out for the first time. Actually, if you're new to the series, as an adult, I demand that you start out with the audiobooks. It'll be a much better experience to start with. And when you catch up, you'll sink right in to the rest of the books. The first 10 books in the series are very solid. Each book adds to the lore, something new, with the exception of maybe nine. I think that's the only book that's mostly filler. 
Uh, it can take a little adjusting to each narrator's individual take on character voices, but overall, I think they're incredibly talented. For existing readers, listening to these will feel like a brand new experience. This is the next best thing to an actual TV show adaptation, in my opinion. There's no word yet on whether they'll continue past number 10. I'm sure with COVID-19 and the lockdowns, it's probably thrown a wrench in production, but I would love to see them continue. Even if they skip a few books later on in the series that are more fillery, it'd be amazing to see them get to the David trilogy. I'd love to listen to that and eventually the final arc of the story. And the best way to ensure that they get there is to support it and buy some audio books, which I am recommending you do. Each book is about three hours long, so the price can feel a little bit steep. They're $18.99 list price, which is crazy. Google Play sells them for about $16 a pop. Audible has them for a more reasonable $9.30, but you have to have a subscription for the discounted price. If they continue... I'd like to see them come to a more reasonable price, like Elle Fanning's Babysitter's Club, I think is the perfect price range. Uh, those are Audible originals for $5.99, and I think that's very reasonable for Animorphs. Animorphs might even be better suited for Audible's free selections, their monthly free books. I think that program could benefit from having some actual books available instead of just fancy podcasts, but I'm not really sure how the financials will work out for the people behind it. I don't know if it would be worth it for Scholastic to, to pursue or for the authors to pursue, but it'd be cool. But if it meant losing this great cast of narrative, Raiders for something a little bit cheaper, I'd prefer to just pay a higher price, but that's just me. If for some reason you don't already have an Audible account, you can sign up for a free trial. You'll get one free book, which could be Animorphs number one, The Invasion. Uh, but more importantly, you'll also get access to the discount pricing on the rest of the series, which you'll get through the duration of your trial, you get to keep whatever books you buy, so there's really nothing to lose, and you also get a variety of free originals. If you use my link in the description, you'll also help support my channel, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you for watching, as always be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the audiobooks if you check them out, and uh, what you think about the future of Animorphs. Leave me a comment, I'm Germ, this is GermTube, and I'll catch you next time.